Section 1 And I appeared by the name of El Shaddai, but by my name Hashem I was not known to them. This passage begins with And Elohim spoke to Moses and said to him, I am Hashem, and I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai. Rabbi Abba talks about trust in Hashem forever, for yet Hashem is an everlasting rock, and we hear many interpretations of this scripture. One is that people have permission to observe and understand up to the level of Hashem, but no higher Rabbi Yehuda. Offers the interpretation that the world was created with justice and is sustained by the name Hashem. Next, the discussion moves to Moses, who said, Adonai, why did you do wrong to this nation? Why did you send me, etc.? And from the time that I have come to Pharaoh to speak in your name, it has become worse for these people, and you did not deliver your people. Rabbi Yehuda wonders how anyone can talk to God like this without being punished, and Rabbi Yitzhak replies that it was because Moses had authority over Malchud like someone over his household, thus he was able to speak without fear. We hear next of judgment and mercy being joined together, and then of the reason for the name El Shaddai. We are told a parable about a king and his daughter to clarify that Yudhei Vavhei spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob only through his somewhat lower intermediary El Shaddai, and El Shaddai is Malchud. Next, Rabbi Yossi changes the topic to the verse, the earth is Hashem's and the fullness thereof. It world and they that dwell in it he tells us that the earth means the holy land and that it receives the first of the blessings and the water from Hashem afterwards the rest of the world receives what is left over Rabbi Yossi also talks about the verse for he founded it upon seas he says that the seas are the seven pillars or sphirot upon which the world is supported the sea of Galilee Malchut rules over them Rabbi Yehuda does not like the phrase rules over them and he contends that Malchut receives from the sphirot thus the sea of Kinerat is filled from them Rabbi Shimon explains why Jacob does not rule over the land of Israel like Moses does saying that Jacob pursued the higher realms for the lower world therefore yet he spoke to him only in the name El Shaddai lastly we learn from Rabbi Shia that everyone who is circumcised and observes the sign of the covenant is righteous and inherits the land as in the verse and I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the relevance of this passage in this section, there are four names for God: El Shaddai, Adonai, Hashem, and Yehovah. Because of their different levels of development, Moses and Jacob received messages from different aspects or manifestations of God. As each of us seeks and resonates to our own spiritual level, we can think about this concept while trying to raise ourselves higher and higher, thus becoming ever more worthy to hear the voice of the One God. One. And Elohim spoke to Moshe and said to him, I am Hashem, and I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob by the name of El Shaddai. Shema 62 to 3. Rabbi Abba opened the discussion, saying, Trust in Hashem forever. Hebadi I add for Yah Hashem is an everlasting rock. Yeshua 264. Trust in Hashem means that all the people of the world have to strengthen themselves in the Holy One. Blessed be he and trust in him too. He asks if so. What is the meaning of Adi and answers? It means that the strength of a person should be in the place which sustains and connects everything and which is called Ad which is Z-E-I-R and is written in the morning he shall devour the prey Ad Bershi 4927 Ad is the place that unites the side and that side meaning that it is the central column that connects the right side and the left side to each other for sustenance and connecting namely so that the two columns are sustained and their illuminations are linked to each other a connection that will not be destroyed three and everything directs its desire towards Ad is written to have Ad the utmost bound or desire of the everlasting hills Bershi 4926 who are the everlasting hills these are the two matriarchs meaning Bana and Malchud which are females and are called Jubilee and Sabbatical Year Bana is called Yobel and Jubilee and Malchud and Sabbatical Year and both are called everlasting hills the hills of the world each one of them is called the hill of the world they are Called world as you say from everlasting to everlasting live from the world to the world Tehillim 10648 meaning Bana and Malchut for both are called world for and they desire Ad which is Z-E-I-R and since being the central column it sustains all sides meaning the right side and the left side and therefore Jubilee which is Bana desires Ad to adorn it with the top three Sphirot and to pour on it blessings which is the secret of the abundant flow of Chesedim and to pour sweet springs onto it which are the secret of Chakma sweetened with Chesedim this is the meaning of go forth O daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him Sure Hasherim 311 King Solomon had Shlomo is the secret of the king that the peace had Shalom is his which is Z-E-I-R and his mother is the secret of Bana sabbatical year which is Malchut desires Ad that is Z-E-I-R and to be blessed by it and to illuminate from it thus the everlasting hills which are Bana. And Malchud assuredly desire at the one to pour out its abundance and the other to receive five. Therefore, the verse says, Trust in Hashem forever. Yeshua 264, which is Zeir and for from thereof, namely Chakma and Bina, which are above Zeir and the place is covered and hidden as none can conceive it. It is a place from which the worlds which are male and female emerge and are formed. This is the meaning of for Yah Hashem is an everlasting rock. Yah is Chakma, Yudi Hevav, Hey Yah And they design and produce the worlds that are male and female. This place is hidden and concealed. Therefore, the scripture says, Trust in Hashem forever. Hebadi Yah to teach that up to here to Zeir and which is called Adi. Everyone is permitted to observe from here and further meaning in Chakma and Bina as mentioned. No one is permitted to observe because it is concealed from everyone. And what is the place that is prohibited to be observed? Is Yah Yudhevav, Hey which are Chakma. Bina once all the worlds were formed and no one is able to understand that place in order to conceive anything. Six Rabbi Yehuda said the scripture proves this the preclusion of understanding above Zeir and for is written for us now the days that are passed from one side of heaven which is Zeir and to the other Devarim 432 so it is expressed in the scripture that questioning and understanding pertain only to the level of heaven which is Zeir and from one side to the other up to here. One is permitted to observe but from here and further meaning above Zeir and no one can comprehend it. Seven another explanation of the passage trust in Hashem forever is that a person has to strengthen himself in the Holy One blessed be he throughout his life no one can harm one who properly places his trust and strengthen him since one who places his strength in the Holy Name endures forever. Eight he asks what is the reason and answer since the world endures by his Holy Name this is. The meaning of for Yah Hashem is an everlasting lit world's rock Hebzer Yeshea 264 which means the former Hebzer of worlds for by two letters were the worlds created this world and the world to come this world was created with judgment and is maintained namely exists on judgment this is the meaning of in the beginning Elohim created Bershi 11 as this name alludes to judgment the reason is so that people would conduct themselves according to judgment law and would not digress. From the path nine come and see it is written and Elohim spoke to Moshe Shemot 61 the name Elohim alludes to the decree of judgment that is looming over him it is written before and Moshe returned to Hashem and said Adonai Shemot 522 spelled Aleph Dalet Nunyad which is the name of Malchut see the strength of Moshe that as soon as he started prophesying his spirit did not rest at this place which is Malchut he said Adonai why have you dealt ill with this people why is it that you have Sent me for since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name he has done evil to this people neither have you delivered your people at all of it 22 to 23 who can talk like this only Moshe who knew that another higher level than Malchud was intended for him because he was a chariot to Zeir Anpin which is the husband of Queen Ten Rabbi Yitzhak said at first the house which is Malchud was given to him for being a chariot to Zeir Anpin which is the husband of Malchud he married the level of Malchud as his house as it is a house for Zeir Anpin therefore he commanded it like a man would command his household and spoke whatever he wished to without fear Moshe too spoke to his household which is Malchud without fear 11 another explanation of an Elohim spoke this is the decree of judgment as the name Elohim is judgment namely Malchud and said to him I am Hashem this is a different grade namely Zeir Anpin which is mercy and here everything is connected together judgment and Mercy together which is great holiness this is the meaning of and said to him I am Hashem which is the attribute of mercy Rabbi Shimon said if it were written and Elohim spoke to Moshe I am Hashem
Did you not know that I am king and it is in my presence that you spoke these words 13 and I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob by the name of El Shaddai why did he use a different name than the names before which were Adonai Yudhi Hey Bab Elohim and here he said El Shaddai he answers this is likened to a king who had an unmarried daughter and also a beloved friend when the king wanted to speak with his beloved friend he used to send his daughter to speak to him and thus the king spoke to him through his daughter the time has come for his daughter to marry on the day she married the king said to her precious queen until now I spoke through you to whomever I wish to from now on I will tell your husband and he will speak with whomever it is necessary after some time the husband said harsh words to her in the king's presence before she started to talk the king took the cause and said to him am I not the king until this day no person spoke to me except through my daughter and I gave you my daughter and I spoke to you openly a thing I have not done for any other person 14 similarly and I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob by the name of El Shaddai which is the name of Malchut before she united with Zeir and face to face this means I appeared to the patriarchs by the name of El Shaddai which is Malchut when she was unmarried in my house I was not spoken to face to face as I did with you and you at the beginning of your speech said to my daughter in my presence such words therefore it is written and I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob by the name of El Shaddai but by my name Hashem I was not known to them that I asked to speak to them in the grade in which I spoke to you 15 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion saying a psalm of David the earth is Hashem's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell in it Tehillim 241 the earth refers to the holy land of Israel that is the first to be blessed by him and watered by him but Hashem afterwards the whole world is watered from it the world and they that dwell in it refers to the rest of the lands that drink from it how do we know this from the words and he will judge the world in righteousness Tehillim 99 16 for he has founded it upon seas Tehillim 242 there are seven pillars which are seven Tzvarach Yisad Burit Tiferet Netzach Hadyazid and Malchut of Zeir and Benon which the earth supports itself and which are seven seas the sea of Kinaret Galilee which is Malchut rules over them Rabbi Yehuda said do not say it rules over them because Malchut does not rule over the seven Tzvarach of Zeir and Benon but the sea of Kinaret is filled from them because Malchut receives from them and established it on the rivers if it he asks which rivers are being referred to and he answers it is written the floods have lifted up Hashem the floods the rivers have lifted up their voice Tehillim 933 which are the Tzvarach of Yisad of Zeir and Benon which is called river as Written and a river went out from Eden to water the garden. Bereshi 210. Therefore, it is written, he established it on the river. 17. Come and see this land which is Malchut is called by the name the land of Israel. When face to face with Zeir and that is called Israel, he asks, Why does not Jacob, who is Israel, rule over it like Moshe? For he is also a chariot to Zeir and which is called Israel. For it is written, and I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob by the name of El Shaddai, which is the name of the Nukba. Before she unites with Zeir and and no more. 18. He answers, We have already established that Jacob took the terrestrial house that is in this world. Therefore, he lost the celestial house which is Malchut. But with the terrestrial house that is the four wives, he reestablished the celestial house which is Malchut with twelve tribes with seventy branches, referring to its seventy names, which is the meaning of the seventy souls who came to Egypt. And we have Already established that Moshe took the celestial house which is Malchut and forsook the terrestrial house because he separated from his wife therefore it is written of Jacob by the name of El Shaddai as mentioned because only by the name El Shaddai did the Holy One blessed be he speak to him and no more than this but by my name Hashem I was not known to them meaning to speak to them in this level of Yudi Hei which is superior 19 and I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob. Rabbi Shia said the glory of the patriarchs was Jacob who was all perfect by all it is written to Abraham to Isaac but by him a letter was added as is written and equals Bob to Jacob the letter Bob was added to him to show that he was more whole than them all but notwithstanding he did not merit uniting with it with Malchut like Moshe did as earlier mentioned 20 and I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan Shemot 64 ITIS because they were circumcised. For all who are circumcised inherit the land therefore the Torah says to give them the land of Canaan for the land is inherited only by a righteous person and everyone who is circumcised is called righteous as is written your people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever Yeshua 6021 everyone who is circumcised and observes the sign of the covenant is called righteous come and learn this from Joseph who was not called righteous in his life until he observed that covenant the sign of the holy covenant once he observed it by the incident of the wife of Potiphar he was called righteous namely Joseph the righteous section two visible and invisible colors Rabbi Laser wonders why in the passage and I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob etc it says and I appeared rather than and I spoke Rabbi Shimon explains the secret of visible and invisible colors the patriarch saw the visible colors of El Shaddai that are the Reflection of the supernal colors Moses was the only person to be able to see the higher colors of Chesed Burit Tiferet next Rabbi Shimon turns to and they who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever saying that the wise are the kind of person who understands higher matters intuitively because they are too deep for words he explains that there are four lights the light that illuminates the light that shines purple light and the light that does not illuminate these correspond to Chesed Burit Tiferet and Malchut the three higher lights are reflected in Malchut we are told that there are three colors in the eye white red and green which are like the three colors of Zer and the pupil of the eye is black the mirror that does not illuminate Rabbi Shimon says that the secret of seeing the three concealed lights is to close your eyes and turn them inwardly toward Kolam Shurak and Shirek. The three places that receive love, power, and beauty when the eye is closed, it sees the higher colors as did Moses, but when it is open, it sees only the lower colors. This explains why Moses was spoken to by Yahweh, hey, but the patriarchs were spoken to by El Shaddai. Finally, Rabbi Shimon tells us that one is not allowed to greet a wicked person, but if one greets a righteous person, it is the same as though he were greeting Hashem. 21 One day, Rabbi Shimon was sitting one day with his son Rabbi Elazar and Rabbi Abba. Rabbi Elazar said in the passage, And I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, why is, and I appeared, stated it should state, and I spoke. Rabbi Shimon said to him, Elazar, my son, this is a very high secret. 22 Come and see, there are visible colors and invisible colors, and both are a high secret of the faith, but people neither know it nor observe it. No one was worthy of the visible colors until the patriarchs came and understood them, that is, conceived them of this. It is written and I appeared since they saw the visible colors 23 and which colors appeared they are of El Shaddai which is Malchut which are the reflection of the supernal colors which are in Shesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and these are the visible colors which means that they contain Chakma and the colors above in Shesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and which are concealed since they are invisible which means they do not contain Chakma but only the light of Shesedim no person understood them to perceive them there in Zeir and except for Moshe of this it is written but by my name Hashem I was not known to them which means I did not appear to them in the superior colors in Shesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and which is called Yudi Hey Bab and if you claim that the patriarchs did not know the name Yudi Hey Bab which is Shesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and this is utterly impossible for the patriarchs are a chariot to Shesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir. And but rather they knew it from those colors that were visible in Malchut 24 it is written and they who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever Daniel 123 he asks in and they who are wise shall shine who are the wise ones he answers this refers to the wise one who will perceive on his own lofty things that people cannot utter by mouth because of their great height and these are called wise one shall shine like the brightness of the firmament he asks what is the firmament he answers this is the firmament of Moshe which is situated in the center namely Zeir and which is the secret of the central column that includes the two columns as well the right and the left and its brightness is concealed and not revealed in Chakma that is called
like a reflector which is a plate of polished metal and is placed against the sun and the sun is seen in it so the three lights of Zeir and that is called sun are visible in Malchut and in this respect Malchut is called a reflector that receives from the sun and the sun is seen in IT26 and those three lights we mentioned above are concealed in their place in Zeir and are situated over this fourth visible light which is Malchut that is to say the three lights flow to the fourth light where the three lights become revealed and shine with Chakma the secret is the I come and see there are three colors in the eye white red and green that are visible through the illumination of Chakma and were imprinted on it namely on the fourth light that is in it which is the black of the eye none of them shines because they are placed in the light that does not shine for their main source is the black in the eye which is Malchut which is the mirror that does not illuminate and these three colors that are in the eye are like those three colors of Zeir and which are hidden and are situated over them that is they are the aspects of the three columns of Zeir and but illuminate and appear in the place of Malchut and they are the ones that appear to the patriarchs in order to know and perceive these hidden three in Zeir and that appeared from within those that did not illuminate meaning the three in Malchut and those that are bright yet hidden which are the three in the place of Zeir and were revealed to Moshe in his firmament and these are situated over and pour abundance to these three colors that are visible in the eye meaning these that appear to the patriarchs 27 and it is a secret that he who wishes to see the three concealed in Zeir and is told close your eyes meaning that he should not draw Shakma which is called eyes and turn the eyeballs towards three places Kolam Shurak and Shirek that draw the three columns of Chesed Bura. And Tiferet is mentioned in this way the three colors in Zeir Anpin will appear that illuminate with Chesedim and shine from the brightness of the left column yet they are hidden and covered since permission is given to see only with closed eyes these three hidden superior colors in Zeir Anpin that are situated over and for abundance to these three colors that are visible in Malchut that do not shine 28 and of this we learn that Moshe merited the illuminating mirror of the three columns of Zeir Anpin is mentioned that is placed over and illuminates to that mirror which does not illuminate which is Malchut other people in the world were worthy of the mirror which does not illuminate only which is Malchut but the patriarch saw from within these three colors that appear in Malchut those hidden three colors that are situated over them and shine on them which are the three columns of Zeir Anpin which three visible in Malchut do not shine so we conclude that also the patriarchs Conceive Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir Anpin though not from their place in Zeir Anpin but only from Chesed Bura and Tiferet that are received in Malchut and appear there therefore it is written and I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob by the name of El Shaddai that is by the three colors that are visible in Malchut that is called El Shaddai 29 but by my name Hashem I was not known to them these are the supernal colors that are hidden yet illuminate the secret of Chesed Bura and Tiferet that is called Yudi Hei that Moshe merited to observe and this is the secret reason why the eye is sometimes closed and sometimes open and visible if it is closed it sees the illuminating mirror which is Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir Anpin and if it is open it sees the mirror that does not illuminate which is Malchut as mentioned therefore the verse says and I appeared in the mirror that does not illuminate which is revealed as the three colors are visible in it. Sight is mentioned in relation to it but in relation to the illuminating mirror which is Zeir Anpin which is concealed that is sight does not pertain to it knowledge is mentioned as is written but by my name Hashem I was not known and it does not say I did not appear since sight applies only to Malchut Rabbi Lazer and Rabbi Abba approached and kissed the hands of Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Abba wept and said well when you are gone from the world and the world will remain orphaned from you who will be able to illuminate then the words of Torah 30 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion saying and thus had KOH shall you say so to him hearty greeting let to the living peace be both to you and peace to your house and peace to all that you have Ishmuel 256 he asks it is written and you shall say KOH to the living which means that riches and honor befit a living man that is a righteous man did not David know able to be able to have said of him saying to him KOH to the living he answers that day was the holy day of Rosh Hashanah and the Holy One blessed be he was sitting in judgment over the world for the Holy One blessed be he, he said and you shall say KOH to the living in order to attach KOH which is Malchut to the living which is Yezid of Zeir Anpin from which all life comes peace be both to you he asks what is both to you it should say you so wherefore I asked Bob both he answers both to you refers to the Holy One blessed be he in order to connect the link of faith which is Malchut which is called you to Zeir Anpin that is called Bob as is proper therefore both to you I asked spelled with a Bob 31 from this I deduce that it is forbidden to be the first degree a wicked person and if he is forced to do so he should be the first degree like David who blessed the Holy One blessed be he, though it seemed he spoke to him Nabal and if you say it was deception it is not so because it is not considered deception for anyone to offer up his words to the Holy One blessed be he though it seems he spoke to a person because this is the way of the righteous who seemingly speak to a person but offer their words to the Holy One blessed be he in order to fulfill the passage I have said Hashem always before me Tehillim 168 whoever is the first to greet a righteous person it is as though he is the first to greet the Holy One blessed be he and all the more so my master meaning Rabbi Shimon who is the piece of above and below section. 3 The four elements, fire, air, water, earth Rabbi Shishkia tells us that when man was created he was made from the dust of the holy temple of below and that the four winds of the world, Chesed, Bura, Tiferet and Malchut, became joined there these four winds joined in the four elements of the world fire, air, water and dust furthermore the four directions of the world joined in the four elements in this way the body of man is composed of and joins together the lower world and the world above. Next Rabbi Shizkiah says that gold, silver, copper and iron are emitted from fire, air, water and dust. He explains further that fire stands in the direction of north air in the east, water in the south and dust in the west opposites are combined and that fire has power of heat and dryness and it combines with the cold moist north water combines with the hot dry south the east draws from them both so it is hot and moist fire and water circulate back and forth between these directions they are in. Conflict though because fire wants to burn up water and water wants to extinguish fire it is the air that reconciles them as is seen in and the wind of Elohim hovers upon the surface of the water dust and receives from fire water and air the air is hot and moist because it draws from fire and water because dust is cold and dry it can receive from all of them. Next we are told how the metals are created from earth air fire and water when the dust fused with fire water and air to produce gold. Silver and copper the dirt became stronger and brought forth other metals it also produced four rivers where the twelve precious stones are found that correspond to the twelve tribes and the twelve oxen under the sea however the main sustenance of the world is still the air or spirit without it nothing could exist the soul nefesh could not exist without the air ruash this is the secret of also that the soul be without knowledge is not good Rabbi Shimon says that man's body was created from the dust of Malchut yet his soul was given to him from the dust of Bindah when he was created from the dust of above and below the fire air and water of above and below were combined in him this is how man was completed with the body and his soul the relevance of this passage at last we are told how the elements that make up the world are combined in the human being and how the spirit sustains everything we can use the images of fire water and air circulating and exchanging properties to remind ourselves what amazing creatures we are well suited to the amazing creation of the world we inhabit another thing to contemplate while reading the section is the question of whether the elements could ever have combined at all if they hadn't done so in the human being and if this isn't the essential reason for the creation of mankind 32 and i appeared to abraham to isaac and to jacob by the name of el shaddai but by my name hashem i was not known to them shemot 63 rabbi shiski opened the discussion saying blessed is the man to whom hashem imputes no iniquity tell him 322 how obtuse are people who do not know and do not observe why they are in the world for when the holy one blessed be he created the world he made man in his image and made him the way he did in order that he should be occupied with the torah and walk in his ways 33 for when adam was created he was composed of the earth of the terrestrial temple which is malchut that is called earth though it is malchut Sweetened by Bindah which is called the earth of the terrestrial temple and the four directions of the world which are Chesed, Bura, Tiferet
Silver, brass, and iron originate in these four elements, meaning that gold originates from a union of Zeir and Pin and Malchut under the domination of fire of the left column. Silver origins in the union of Zeir and Pin and Malchut under the domination of water of the right column. Brass originates in the domination of the central column and iron in Malchut when it is not united with Zeir and Pin. Under these four, there are other similar metals from the gold metal. A green metal alloy is produced and from the silver metal lead, etc. 35. Come and see fire, air, water, and earth are the first ones, and the roots above and below upper and lower beings are based on them. These four elements, fire, air, water, and earth, correspond to the four directions of the world because the relation between them is that of an outer to the inner. Therefore, they are situated in these four, north, south, east, and west, which are the four directions of the world and the four elements abide in them. Fire, is to the north. Side which are the vowel shirup, the left column and the sphere of Burea is to the east side which is the vowel chiric, the central column and the sphere of typhoid water is to the south side which is the vowel colon, the right column and the sphere of cheese earth is to the west which is the sphere of Malchut that receives the three fire, air and water and these four elements, fire, air, water, earth, are connected to the four directions, north, south, east and west and they are all one except. They are wrapped one within another as outer and inner and these fire, air, water, earth produce four metals namely by means of union with Malchut which are gold, silver, brass and iron and together there are twelve aspects and are all one namely three columns and Malchut that receives them and they are thus three times four because the first eight are inner and outer and the four metals are produced by them as shall be said thirty six come and see fire is in the left column to the north side which is pure because in the fire are the power of the heat and the power of the dryness its opposite is the north which is cold and moist the one blends with the other and they are one water is in the right column and is to the south side which is cheese and is hot and dry as shall be said and the holy one blessed be he in order to join them together make the disposition of the one as the disposition of the other 37 he explains further in the north which is cold and moist was fire placed which is hot and dry similarly he switched them in the south side in the south which is hot and dry water was placed which is cold and moist now he explains the blending together that he effected and he says and the holy one blessed be he blended them as one because water emerges from the south and enters into the north and water flows from the north similarly fire emerges from the north and comes into the power of the south and the power of heat emerges into the world from the south we see that the north brings forth water that appertains to the south and the south produces heat that appertains to the north because the holy one blessed be he caused them to borrow from each other and each one lent the other of its own as appropriate similarly the wind and the east side which are hot and moist contains two opposites because heat comes from the fire which is in the north and moisture comes from water which is in the south in order that they should lend one to the other to be included and join with each other 38 he explains that opposites contained air and in the east and says come and see fire is on the one side south and water is on the other north they are in conflict as fire wants to burn the water and water wants to extinguish fire air comes between them and holds both sides together upholding them both as is written and the wind from Elohim moved over the surface of the water bear sheet 12 for fire is situated above to the south side and water to the north Side air comes between them holds both sides and settles the quarrel the water air and fire stand over the earth and by means of the three over it it receives from all of them 39 he explains further saying come and see air is to the east behold the east is hot and moist and so air is hot and moist therefore it is attached to both sides since fire is hot and dry and water is cold and moist so the hot aspect in air which is hot and moist is attached to fire and the cold aspect in it is attached to water it therefore brought peace and nullified the conflict between fire and water 40 earth is cold and dry therefore it can receive upon itself all of them namely the fire water and air they all perform their tasks by it and it receives from all of them in order to produce by their power sustenance to the world because the earth is attached to the west being cold and dry like the west and the cold aspect in the earth is attached to the north which is cold and moist because Cold is attached to cold therefore the north is attached to the west from the one side that which is dry in the south which is hot and dry is attached to the dryness of the west on the other side of the west and so the west is attached to the two sides 41 the south similarly is attached to the east for the heat of the south fuses with the heat of the east similarly the east is attached to the north because its moistness fuses with the moistness of the north now there is southeast meaning that they adhere to each other through their mutual heat northeast through their mutual moistness northwest through their mutual coldness and southwest through their mutual dryness they all are combined with each other for they evolve from one to another 42 in a similar way north produces gold because gold is formed by the potency of the fire this is the meaning of from the north comes forth gold eo 3722 since fire fuses with the earth and gold is formed this is the meaning of heat as gold dust EO 286 and the secret meaning of two gold cherubs Shema 2518 43 water fuses with earth and the coldness of the earth with the moistness of the water produces silver which is the secret of the light of Chesedim in the south which flows from above downwards when it fuses with the coldness and dryness in the earth the dryness of the earth is voided and becomes moist meaning that it flows from above downwards this grain of earth is called silver now earth is attached to two sides to gold and silver and is placed between the mere holds to water and fire being the central column as mentioned and brings them both out as one which is considered like burnished brass Daniel 106 when earth is on its own with its coldness and dryness it produces iron as mentioned this is deduced from it the iron is blunt at Kahaka 1010 earth which is Malchut is called the dark at Kahahan because Malchut is the secret of the hand Tephilin as is known 44 this earth fuses with them all namely with fire air and water and they all produce with it according to their likeness fire produces gold which is like it and so does water produce silver which is like it come and see without earth there is neither gold silver nor brass because each one lends to the other of its characteristics in order to combine one with the other and the earth fuses with all of them because the two sides fire and water fuse with it for the coldness and it fuses with the water and the dryness and it fuses with the fire and air which is zeir and is attracted to it because it combines these two fire and water and performs its deed by it. air also combines fire and water for the heat and it is from fire and the moistness and it is from water 45 we find that when the earth fused with fire water and air that produced with it gold silver and brass earth acquired strength earth made and produced other metal similar to gold silver and brass in the likeness of gold the earth Produces dross of gold which is green just like real gold in the likeness of silver it produces lead which is like silver and in the likeness of the superior brass it produces tin which is called brass minor in the likeness of iron it produces a different kind of iron this is derived from iron sharpens iron Michelet 2717 IT shows that there are two kinds of iron 46 come and see fire air water and earth are all attached to each other and connected to one another there is no division between them therefore there is no disconnection between gold silver and brass that emerge from them but those that earth produces afterwards namely the dross of gold lead tin and iron do not connect with each other as those superior do namely gold silver and brass that emerge from fire water and air when combined with earth this is stated in the verse and from hence it was parted and branched into four streams bear sheet 210 among those there is division 47 since when the earth Produced by the power of the three upper ones, it brought forth on its own four rivers where there are precious stones. They concentrate in one place, namely in the river Pishon, only that originates from the power of the fire which is in the earth. As is written, there is the crystal and the onyx stone of it twelve, and these precious stones are twelve in number to the four directions of the world, three to every side. For when they are included within each other, there are only three to each of fire, water, air, and earth instead of four to each side, since earth has no illumination of its own being, just the recipient, and they correspond to the twelve tribes. As is written, and the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names. Shema 2821, and these are the twelve oxen that stood under the sea that Solomon made mentioned in Imelashim 72548. Come and see, even though the four aspects that we mentioned are interconnected and sustain the world, it is. Mostly sustained on air, everything exists because of it. The nefesh exists only with air. Rash or air would be missing from it even for one moment. The nefesh could not exist. This is the secret of what is written. Also, that the soul nefesh be without knowledge is not good. Mishlei 192. That knowledge is the central column that is called air. A nefesh without rash is no good and cannot
Supernal wisdom wherein lies the essence of everything. 50 Rabbi Shimon said, Rabbi Shizkiah said that when the Holy One blessed be he created Adam, namely his body, it was created from the earth of the terrestrial temple which is Malchut, yet his soul was given to him from the earth of the celestial temple which is Bainas, he was created from the lower earth. Three aspects of the elements of the world which are lower fire, air, and water were combined with it with earth, so when he was created from the upper earth, three aspects of the elements of the world, upper fire, air, and water were combined with earth, and Adam was complete in body and in soul. This is the meaning of blessed is the man to whom Hashem imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile. Tehillim 322 And will Hashem not impute iniquity to him when there is no guile in his spirit, namely when he has a soul from Bainas 51 come and see Moshe was more perfect than the patriarchs because the Holy One blessed be. He spoke to him from a higher grade than all of them and the grade of the patriarchs Moshe frequented the inside of the king's house which is Zeir and namely that he was of the aspect of that who is inner aspect of Zeir and therefore it is written and I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob and we already explained this section 4 and I will bring you out and I will deliver you and I will redeem you Rabbi Yehuda tells us that the exodus from Egypt was the most important part of the events in the title verse that is why it was mentioned first but Rabbi Yossi thinks that the best parts are and I will deliver you and I will redeem you because this meant the children of Israel would not be followed or harmed and they would be redeemed furthermore Hashem promised to accept them as his people and bring them to the land of Israel the relevance of this passage for deeper understanding of this section it is essential to remember that it applies to each of us as individuals remembering God's promise to deliver us from any kind of servitude to keep us safe to bring us back to himself and to give us a home we can go through our days with renewed faith and hope in our own futures 52 therefore say to the children of Israel I am Hashem and I will bring you out Shemot 66 Rabbi Yehuda said this passage is in reverse order for it is first written and I will bring you out from under the burdens of Egypt and then and I will deliver you out of their bondage and then and I will redeem you should it not have first said I will redeem you and then and I will bring you out and he answers the most important point of all he mentioned first because the Holy One blessed be he wanted to herald to them first the best of all which is the exodus from Egypt 53 Rabbi Yossi said but the best of all is and I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you as an Elohim of it 7 yet he told them this afterwards he said to him that there was nothing better for them than an exodus at that time because they thought they would never leave their bondage for they saw that all the prisoners among them were tied with knots of sorcery and that they would be forever prevented to go free from them therefore they were announced first of them which was more dear to them than anything else 54 and if you argue that even though they left Egypt the Egyptians might follow them to harm them therefore it is written and I will deliver you out of their bondage if you say it is possible that they would go out and be saved but they would not be redeemed the Torah says and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm if you say that he would not accept them as his people it is written and I will take and if you say that when he accepts them as a people he will not bring them to the land of Israel of this is written and I will bring you into the land Shemot 68 section 5 general and Particular Rabbi Yossi opens with, and I shall take you to me as a people, and I will be to you as Elohim, and you will know that I am Hashem your Elohim. Rabbi Shimon tells us that the first and most important precept is to know God in the general sense, to know that there is a supernal ruler who is the master of the world and who created all the worlds, heaven and earth, and all their beings, just as this is the beginning of the precepts, the end of them is to know him, particularly general and particular are beginning and end. They are also the secret of male and female as in Zir and Ben and Mukba. At the end of forty years of wandering after leaving Egypt, Moses told the children of Israel, Know therefore this day and consider it in your heart that Yudhe Bavhe is the Elohim. This then is the particular Rabbi Shimon says that the fear of Hashem is the beginning of knowing him. In particular, we are told next that a person should perfect the two hundred and forty eight limbs of the soul of the soul of man. The 248 positive precepts after he has been perfected in general he will know in particular Rabbi Shimon turns to a discussion of the limbs the days of the year the Sfirah and their cures blessings life and cures come down to a person only after he completes all 248 precepts the first word of the Torah when it was given on Mount Sinai was Anakai I am which is the secret of the first precept of knowing him in general for Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire is an allusion to the particular the relevance of this passage it seems that we can in no way learn to know God until we acknowledge that he exists and that he created all the worlds heaven and earth and all their inhabitants if we find it difficult to know God to encounter him in a particular and personal way reading of this passage can encourage us by bringing us back to encounter him in general we may softly think to ourselves about what we know of the world and its people and what we imagine of heaven and the angels and then remember that God made them all this understanding will lead us to the wisdom which enables us to encounter God in the particular R.A.I. may him to the faithful shepherd 55 and I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you as an Elohim and you shall know that I am Hashem your Elohim Shemot 67 this commandment is the first of all the precepts because the very beginning of all the precepts I asked to know the Holy One blessed be he in the general aspect he asks what is meant by general he answers it I asked to know that there is a supernal ruler who is the master of the world and who created all the worlds heaven and earth and all their hosts this is in general and everything ends in the particular namely to know him in the details 56 general and particular is beginning and end they are the secret of male and female as one because Z.E.I.R. and is called general and the Mukba is called particular thus man in this world who is occupied with precepts is occupied with it. General and particular which are the beginning and the end of the precepts and we find man in this world to be general and particular meaning that he has to be perfected by both and the perfection of this world is general and particular so the general which is Zeir and would be united with the Nukva which is particular therefore it is first of all necessary to know that there is a ruler and judge in the world who is the master of all the worlds who created man from dust and blew into his nostrils the breath of life this is general 57 when the children of Israel left Egypt they did not know the Holy One blessed be he when Moshe came to them he taught them this first precept as written and you shall know that I am Hashem your Elohim who brings you out were it not for this commandment the children of Israel would not be faithful to Hashem even after all these miracles and mighty acts that the Holy One blessed be he performed for them in Egypt after they knew this Commandment in general miracles and mighty deeds were performed for them for they were already certain that they would believe in Hashem through them as is written and Yisrael Sawin believed in Hashem and in Moshe his servant Shemot 1431 58 at the end of 40 years they endeavored in all the precepts of the Torah that Moshe taught them both those that apply in the Holy Land and those that are also applicable outside the Holy Land and he taught them the particular as is written no. Therefore this day and consider it in your heart this day is precise that which they had no permission to know beforehand dash that Hashem is the Elohim Devarim 439 this is knowing by the way of particulars in this word particular there are many secrets and mysteries this passage Hashem is the Elohim and the previous passage and you shall know that I am Hashem your Elohim all pertain to the same thing only one is in general and the other is in particular 59 and if you ask is it not Written the fear of Hashem is the beginning of knowledge Mishlei 17 and Malchud which is the secret of particular is called the fear of Hashem yet still in all it is referred to as the beginning so we see that the particular is the beginning and not the general the explanation is that we are here discussing the particular itself meaning the beginning of the particular is that it is necessary to know first what the fear of Hashem is but the beginning of everything is the general and not the particular and one should fear him before knowing and conceiving the fear of Hashem so why it is written the fear of Hashem is the beginning of knowledge which seems to mean it is first necessary to know him he answers yet here it is written the beginning of knowledge meaning that first it is necessary to fear him and through fear we come to the beginning of knowledge and to know him since the fear of Hashem is the beginning of knowing him in particular as mentioned 60 therefore the First commandment is to know the Holy One, blessed be he in general and in particular in the beginning and in the end as is written in Egypt, and you shall know that I am Hashem your Elohim which is in the future tense that culminates at the end of forty years in particular and this is the secret meaning of I am first and I am last. Yeshayah 446 I am
For all the limbs above in Zeir and Ben and below in Mandalim supply a flow of blessings for the days of the year which are the Sfirat of Maljud which is the particular for by the positive precepts a person performs he draws a flow of blessings from a limb which is the secret of one channel of Zeir and Ben to one of the days of the year which is the meaning of particular then healing and life are suspended over us from above until the limbs become filled with all perfection and supply them to the particular which is the year then the Mokin of the particular are revealed who caused the limbs to be filled with all perfection the days of the year are those that caused this because the limbs were too perfect and if the year did not need improvement the limbs which are the channels of the flow from Zeir and Ben would not become filled with abundance therefore it is considered as though the days of the year gave healing and life to the limb 62 and so it is below when a person perfects himself with these 248 positive precepts in the Torah there is no day that will not be blessed him by that man and when they are blessed from him life and healing are suspended over him from above this means that they are not drawn to Malchut before man completes all the 248 positive precepts in their entirety and they are suspended above him from above until then what caused the supernal channels to be filled with healing and life the days of the year as mentioned before therefore it is considered as though the days of the year gave them healing and life as mentioned just as the days of the year are blessed from above from the secret of man which is Zeir and they are also blessed below from the secret of the lower man through the precepts that he fulfills 63 fortunate are the children of Israel in this world with those precepts that they observe for they are called men because of this as is written armenia just call 3431 this means you are called men and idol Worshippers are not called men since the children of Israel are called men they should strive in the precepts of the Torah which are 613 corresponding to the 248 limbs and 365 sinews that are in the human body so they would all form one body in accordance with the secret meaning of man 64 when the Holy One blessed be he gave the Torah to the children of Israel on Mount Sinai the first word was I have Anakai I contains many secrets and here is the secret of the first precept of knowing him in general for it is written I which alludes to the existence of an Elohim a supernal ruler over the world which is the secret of Zeir and which is general as written for Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire Devarim 424 which is the secret of Zeir and and is the first precept of the aspect of general so there is here an allusion to the particular for it is written Hashem your Elohim which is a particular and this general and particular is the first precept of the need to know in the beginning and in the end as we explained end of RAI may in the section 6 but they hear can not to Moshe for anguish of spirit Rabbi Yehuda says anguish of spirit means the people did not have enough rest or enough breath but Rabbi Shimon answers that it means two things that Bina had not yet released joy so rest and freedom were not yet available and that Malchut had not yet ruled in the world to institute just law 65 and Moshe spoke so to the children of Israel but they hear can not to Moshe for anguish of spirit Shemot 69 he asks what is anguish of spirit Rabbi Yehuda said they did not rest from their labor and they did not gather into themselves sufficient breath Rabbi Shimon said anguish of spirit means the jubilee was still not released which is Bina to give them rest and freedom and the last spirit which is Malchut had not yet ruled in the world to institute just laws in the world therefore there was anguish of spirit which spirit is it, it is the last spirit that we mentioned which is Malchut who was too helpless to save Israel which is the meaning of anguish of spirit section 7 voice and speech Rabbi Shimon begins with behold the children of Israel did not listen to me and how will Pharaoh hearken to me and I have impeded lips he says that Zerenpin is voice and Malchut is speech or words Moses was voice but while the people were in exile he had no speech until he reached Mount Sinai and was given the Torah then voice combined with speech and he spoke words we hear that said in for Elohim has said lest the people regret does not mean speaking by mouth but is rather the silent wish of the heart Rabbi Shimon turns to the verse and I appear to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob he tells us that Jacob was a vehicle for Typhur at the central column while Abraham and Isaac are the right and left columns their perfection depending on the central one lastly he says that whoever has earned a covenant has earned the land because the two are combined 66 come and see it is written behold the children of Israel did not listen to me how then shall Pharaoh hear me who am of uncircumcised lips Shema 612 he asks what is who am of uncircumcised lips at first it was written I am not an eloquent man but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue to which the Holy One blessed be he replied who gave man a mouth and he said and I will be with your mouth Shema 410 to 12 can you imagine that it was not so yet now he says I am of uncircumcised lips if so where is the previous assurance of the Holy One blessed be he to him namely the assurance and I will be with your mouth 67 and he answers it is a secret Moshe I voice namely Zeir and that is called voice and speech which is his words namely Malchut was in exile therefore Moshe was impeded in mouth from explaining things and therefore he said how then shall Pharaoh hear me when my speech which is Malchut is still in exile and I am speechless a speechless voice for it is in exile therefore the Holy One blessed be he made Aaron a partner to him instead of Malchut as he is the Queen's best man 68 come and see as long as speech which is Malchut was in exile voice which is Zeir and was gone from speech and speech was uncircumcised voiceless when Moshe came the voice came because he was a chariot to Zeir and which is called voice Moshe was voice without speech because speech was in exile and Moshe went while speech was in exile to Mount Sinai and the Torah was given at that time voice joined with speech namely Zeir and with Malchut and then he spoke words this is the meaning of an Elohim spoke all these words Shema 201 in the aspect of voice without speech and so he went until these became close then Moshe became properly whole with speech because voice and speech were whole together 69 and Moshe complained that he lacked speech except for the time when Malchut Spoke to reproach him, namely at the time that is written for since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he had done evil to this people. Shema 523 immediately, and Elohim spoke to Moshe since Malchut, the secret of word which is called Elohim, spoke to him sternly as the word speak implies a stern language. She reproached him for saying, For since I came to Pharaoh, Malchut started to speak to him even though she was in exile, the reason being that the speech was only to show anger, come and see that it was so because speech started speaking and then stopped, and the voice which is Zeir and completed it, hence the passage ends, and said to him, I am Hashem, because Hashem is Zeir and that is because speech was still in exile and its time to speak had not yet come, therefore Zeir and spoke with him seventy because of this Moshe was not whole in the beginning, not having the word that is Malchut, for he was voice that needs a word and came for speech to take it out of the exile as Soon as it emerged from the exile and voice and speech united at Mount Sinai as mentioned Moshe was perfected and was cured of his speech impediment and then we find voice and word together holy 71 come and see all the days that Moshe was in Egypt and wanted to take out the word from exile the word which is speech did not speak as soon as it emerged from the exile and voice and speech combined that word which is speech namely Malchut led and guided Israel but did not speak until Israel approached Mount Sinai it opened with the Torah which is the proper way and if you claim it is written for Elohim said lest the people repent Shema 1317 and the name Elohim denotes Malchut so it spoke before Torah was given he answers it says said which is not speaking by mouth but rather the silent wish of the heart which is called saying as in Haman Godlet said in his heart Esther 66 as we have already explained 72 and Elohim spoke to Moshe and said to him I am Hashem Shema 62 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying I rose to open to my beloved but my beloved has turned away and was gone Sure Hashirim 56 I rose to open to my beloved this is voice which is Zeir and which is the beloved of Malchut come and see when the congregation of Israel which is Malchut is in exile the voice was gone from it and the word subsided from it as is written I was done with silence Tehillim 393 and if the word awakened meaning that it was stimulated to speak it is written but my beloved has turned away and was gone since the voice was gone from it and the word discontinued hence and Elohim spoke to Moshe it started to speak and then stopped and remained silent and afterwards the voice finished the sentence which is Zeir and and said and said to him I am Hashem 73 and I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob by Jacob there is an additional
has returned to its place. This is the meaning of and I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob with an additional Bob 75 by the name of El Shadeh means I appear to them from within the mirror that does not illuminate, which is Malchut that is called El Shadeh, but did not appear through the illuminating mirror, which is Zeir and been called Y U D A Bob. Hey, and if you say the patriarchs united with the Mukba only namely Malchut and not more come and see that Zeir and been never separated. From the Mukba in relation to the patriarchs, this is the meaning of and I have also established my covenant with them. Shemot 64 because the covenant that is the Yezid of Zeir and been joined with Malchut 76 one should learn from the Holy One, blessed be he not to separate between Zeir and and the Mukba because he did not separate them as is written El Shadeh, which is the Mukba, and also and also I have sustained my covenant with them, which is Yezid of Zeir and that has joined with her. And we learned that whoever has merited to a covenant to Yezid of Zeir and been merited the land which is the Mukva since they are joined together as mentioned section 8 be afraid of the sword Rabbi Shimon speaks to Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi about the verse be afraid of the sword for wrath brings the punishment of the sword that you may know that there is a judgment he says the sword is the sword that avenges the revenge of the covenant in other words that punishes anyone who cheats the covenant or is perverse for wrath brings the punishments of the sword because all who falsify the covenant decrease the desire of Malchut to take sustenance from Zeir and on the other hand everyone who observes the covenant stimulates it properly thereby blessing those above and those below the covenant is stimulated whenever righteous people are found in the world as evidence for this Rabbi Shimon offers and also I have sustained my covenant with them too. Give them the land of Canaan, the land of their sojourns, had Megiri, and when the covenant was still remembered and kept by the children of Israel, all the Sfirah combined in one to liberate them from Egypt. 77 One day Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi were before Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion, saying, Be afraid of the sword, for wrath brings the punishments of the sword that you may know that there is a judgment. E of 1929 He asked, It is written, Be afraid of the sword, what sword he answers, This is a sword that shall avenge my covenant. Vayikra 2625 The sword which is Malchut stands to observe who is false to the covenant, which is Yezid, because anyone who is false to the covenant blemishes it with sexual misconduct or spilling semen in vain. It is the sword that takes vengeance on him. 78 This is the meaning of for wrath brings the punishments of the sword. What is the reason? ITIS that anyone who is false to the covenant distances the desire of Malchut to receive. Sustenance from Zeir and Ben and thus whoever should receive sustenance namely Yezid does not receive it and does not give to his place since his place which is Malchut is not awakened toward him because of the blemish in the covenant the desire to receive sustenance was removed from IT everyone who observes this covenant arouses the covenant towards its place which is Malchut and the upper and lower beings are blessed 79 who awakens this covenant to its place when there are righteous people. In the world they awaken IT how do we know this from the words and I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan the land of their sojourns had Megarihem Shemot 64 what is Megarihem ITIS as written be afraid had guru of the sword which is Malchut as mentioned because it is a place that causes fear in the world therefore IT says be afraid of the sword so the patriarch stimulated the covenant to its place which is Malchut of which it says to give to. Then the land of their sojourns, as explained, 80 in which they sojourned, had Garuva Garu means that from the day that they approached the Holy One, blessed be he, they had feared in it from Hashem, and it consisted of a supernal fear in observing his commandments, because Malchut is an aspect of fear, and if a person will not place fear over his head in observing the covenant, he will never fear of the Holy One, blessed be he, and the other precepts, 81, come and see of the awakening. From below, when the children of Israel were awakened towards the Holy One, blessed be he, and cried before him, it is written, and I have remembered my covenant, Shemot 65, because he remembered the covenant, then the desire arose to connect everything in one bond, as since the covenant was awakened, which is Yezid of Zeir and the bond of all the Sfirat of Zeir and became awakened, and I have remembered my covenant means to attach it to its place, which is Malchut, therefore it is written. Therefore say to the children of Israel I am Hashem Bibit 6 for all the Sfirah joined into one bond to redeem Israel from Egypt section 9 these are the heads of their fathers houses the section opens with the verse and Hashem spoke to Moses and Aaron and commanded them about the children of Israel and about Pharaoh the king of Egypt Rabbi Yossi explains that this means the children of Israel were to be led with gentleness and the Pharaoh was to be treated with honor and respect Rabbi Yisa wonders why it says these are the leaders of their fathers house and Rabbi Shimon answers that they were kings and the children of kings leaders of their clans who did not deny their customs or mingle with other nations Moses and Aaron were without equal among the princes of Israel because of their lineage especially because of Pinchas who saved so many thousands when he killed Zimri and Kajbi and halted the plague God saw that two of Aaron's sons would eventually blemished the covenant so he did not want to send Aaron on the mission but when he saw Pinchas repairing the blemish, sustaining the covenant, he reinstated Aaron with Moses. Rabbi Shimon adds that Moses is air or spirit and Aaron is water and together they combine Tiferet and she said the relevance of this passage when people are chosen to be leaders it is because they have some quality or qualities that make them fit for leadership as we think about this section we can study the ways in which Moses and Aaron exhibited these qualities by showing gentleness, honor and respect to both their own people and their adversary this ability in a man to transcend his own nature and honor his enemies, for even criminals treat their friends with respect, is the sign of a great soul one who has overcome his lower nature and thereby rules his inner kingdom this is the true royal man who is also the natural choice for a temporal leader reading the section will make us more fit for leadership ourselves and help us guide others to their own freedom 82 and Hashem spoke to Moshe and to Aaron and gave them a charge to the children of Israel and to Pharaoh king of Egypt Shemot 613 Rabbi Yossi said the reason it says and gave them a charge to the children of Israel is that he commanded to lead them with gentleness as necessary and to Pharaoh means treating him with honor this has already been explained 83 Rabbi Yossi said why did the Torah place close to the verse the paragraph of these are the heads of their fathers houses Ibn 14 he answers the holy one blessed be he said to him speak to the children of Israel gently because even though they are in hard labor they are kings the children of kings therefore it is written these are the heads of their fathers houses as he said to him these that you see are the heads of fathers houses 84 Rabbi Yossi said this is why these are the heads of their fathers houses I asked sent verse to teach that they all did not deny their customs did not mingle with any other nation there are those who stood on their holy ground and were not false by mingling with the Egyptians Rabbi Acha said the reason these are the heads of their fathers houses I said in order to express the lineage of Moshe and Aaron that they were suitable to take out the children of Israel to speak to Pharaoh and to chastise him with the rod their equal was not to be found among all the princes of Israel 85 come and CIT is written and Eliezer the son of Aaron took him one of the daughters of Putile to wife and she bore him pinches these are the heads of the fathers of the Levites Shemot 625 he asks why does it say these are the heads in plural pinches was only one he answers because pinches saved so many thousands and tens of thousands of Israel and saved many heads of fathers when he killed Zimri and Kashbi so the plague was stayed from Israel therefore it is written of him these in Plural 86 Another explanation of the passage that says and she bore pinches these are the heads in plural because the loss of the heads of the Levites was recovered in him and he restored whatever they missed and was burned he earned their priesthood and the form of both of them dwelt in pinches he asks you say that the loss of the heads of Levites is found in him who are they he answers they are Nadab and Abihu they separated the sign of the covenant from its place which is Malchut. Because they offered a strange fire and he came and connected them therefore the inheritance and the spirit of both of them was given to him and it is mentioned here in the passage what will occur later on therefore it is written by him these are the heads in plural 87 and if you ask why is pinches mentioned here after all the passage came only to impress the lineage of Moshe and Aaron as mentioned he answers because the Holy One blessed be he saw Aaron when he said and I remembered. My coven
Really want to understand this and know that Hashem is Elohim you need to know that the good and evil inclinations dwell in the heart together and that you must love him with both one should convert the evil attributes so that instead of sinning they serve Hashem then the evil inclination and the good inclination will be one and you will find that Hashem is Elohim in this way judgment and mercy are included together we are told that the wicked prevent the blessings from above from being drawn down to them as in and he will hold up the heaven so that there shall be no rain this is because they separate the evil inclination from the good one using the evil one Rabbi Shimon speaks about the left and right and how they relate to judgment he next returns to a discussion in the previous section reiterating that the element of air combined with that of water in Moses and Aaron thus combining Tiferet with Jesus he also repeats the admonition to unify the holy name properly by Worshipping with one's whole heart and with one's whole soul. 89 One night Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba were in their lodgings in law. They awoke to study Torah. Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion saying, No, therefore this day and consider it in your heart. Had love that Hashem he is Elohim. Devarim 439. He asks this passage should have said, No, therefore this day that Hashem he is Elohim. And at the end and consider it in your heart because the knowledge that Hashem is Elohim prepares. One to consider it in the heart so and if he has already considered it in his heart one most certainly has the knowledge also it should have said Labesha heart with one bet not Labesha with two bets 90 he answers but Moshe said if you really want to understand this and know that Hashem is Elohim then consider it in your heart Labavka and thus know it for Labavka means the good inclination and evil inclination that dwell in the heart are included within one another and are one. And you shall love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart had Labavka Devarim 65 meaning with both your inclinations the good inclination and the evil inclination thus he should convert the evil attributes of the evil inclination to be good namely to serve Hashem with them and not sin through them and certainly there is no more difference between the good inclination and the evil inclination and they are one and you will find that Hashem is Elohim the attribute of judgment which is called. Elohim is included in Yudhi Bab which is the attribute of mercy because they are included the one within the other as the evil inclination and the good inclination are combined in the heart and they are one so it cannot be known that Hashem is Elohim except through considering it in the heart therefore the passage mentioned first and consider it in your heart to know through IT that Hashem he is Elohim 91 Rabbi Lazar also said the wicked cause a blemish above with their evil actions what is the blemish ITIS that the left is not included within the right above it rather dominates by means of judgment by itself this is because the evil inclination below is not included in the good inclination to work with it to draw good as mentioned because of the sins of people who sin through the evil inclination and attract by it the domination of judgment and they do not cause a blemish above but actually to themselves this is the meaning of not as the corruption but the Blemish of his sons or his head low with Bob the corruption not head low with Allah the blemish of Arm 325 first it is said is the corruption seemingly indicating that they blemish above and then not the blemish of his sons seemingly that they do not cause blemish above it is as if they cause a blemish yet do not cause a blemish they cause that is they bring about that blessings from above do not flow to them as is written and shut up the heavens that there be no rain of Arm 1117 they damage the channels of sustenance above yet they do not cause because the heavens namely the channels of above receive for themselves as much blessings and sustenance as they need but they do not receive sustenance to pour downward certainly this is not a blemish and flaw of the above but rather it is a blemish of these wicked and it is upon them that this floresce and not above 92 also it can be explained his head low with Bob means that the right is not included in the left above so that blessings are not drawn downwards and to this is said is with Vav not head low is spelled with Aleph since they do not receive blessings to draw to those below therefore they rest blemish to cause this ITIS because the wicked separate the evil inclination from the good inclination and cleave to the evil inclination 93 come and see Judah is come from the left side because Judah is the secret of Malchut and Malchut originates in the left side and he cleft to the right in order to overpower nations and break their power for had he not cleft to the right he would not break their power and if you ask why did he cleave to the right seeing that it is the left that provokes judgments in the world and why was not the left sufficient for him to break the power of the nations 94 he answers but this is a secret when the Holy One blessed be he judges Israel he judges them only from the left side in order to reject them with the left and beckon them with the right but with the other nations he fends them off with the right and draws them with the left and this may be deduced from the proselyte by conviction namely because when one of them becomes attracted to holiness and he converts he is called the proselyte by conviction let a convert of righteousness righteousness is the name of the left aspect of Malchut so we see that he attracts them with the left and he explains he fends them off with the right as it is written your right hand Hashem is glorious in power your right hand Hashem has dashed the enemy in pieces Shemot 156 he attracts them with the left as we already said that the one from among them who has come closer to Judaism is called the convert of righteousness which is left 95 therefore Judah who is from the left side combined with the right in order to subdue the nations and his journeys were to the right of the standards those tribes that were with him all joined to the right Yisuskar toiled in Torah which is right as is written from his right hand a fiery law unto them, Devarim 332, and so Zebulun who supported the Torah which is right, it is written, the right thigh I cross 732, because the right leg supports the right side of the body, therefore Judah was attached to the side and that side, namely to the left and the right north, which is left to water, which is right, 96 Reuben who sinned against his father dwelt in the right, which is Jesus, because of the sin he connected with the left and clove to it, therefore. Those who are with him in his standard are left, Shimon is left because of the living creature that has a face of the ox, which is Burah, as is written, the face of an ox on the left side, Yajiskal 110, Gad is the left leg, namely Hot, as is written, Gad raiders shall marad him, but he shall overcome at last, Lithiel Bershi 4919, overcoming is the action of the left, and he is the leg, the south clove to fire right with the left, 97, and similarly the purpose of what we said and you. Shall lay on your heart have love which is spelled with two bets is to include them together the left and the right and then you will know that Hashem he is the Elohim Rabbi Abba said definitely it is so and now it is understandable what is said he is Aaron and Moshe Shemot 626 he is Moshe and Aaron Ibn 27 it is to teach that air which is Tiferet combined with water which is Jesus and water which is Jesus combined with air which is Tiferet to be one therefore it is written he 98. Rabbi Abba opened the discussion saying and you shall love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind Devarim 65 similarly what we said about the unification of right and left the holy unification is also alluded to here and it serves as an admonition to man to profess the unity the holy name properly with supernal love with all your heart namely with both your inclinations which are right and left and are called good inclination and evil. Inclination and with all your soul, this is the soul of David that is placed between them and with all your might, meaning to join them the right and the left above in the place where there is no limit. 99 Another explanation of and with all your might, this is Jacob, namely Zeir and Pen, who is attached to all sides to the right and to the left, being the central column, and it all is the complete unity as it should be. Therefore, the passage says, He is Aaron and Moshe, he is Moshe and Aaron. It is all one, for they have united one with the other without division between them. Section 11 Take your rod and it shall turn into a snake. Rabbi Yehuda talks about how much he loves studying and talking about the Torah and praising God for his righteous laws. He says that David, as the king of Israel, had to judge and lead his people to keep them on the way of truth. The relevance of this passage again, we have the recurring themes of the law or the word as. Expressed in the Torah and judgment and leadership, the title verse talks about the rod that turned into a snake in front of the Pharaoh. Imagining the snake slash rod as a symbol of stewardship will help us pull these themes together for our meditation. When the power was given to Aaron to do this miracle, he enabled himself and Moses to assume leadership over the people, and therefore also the right to judge them. The rod was a symbol of authority, remembering that the snake was symbolic of man's original fall. We can see that assuming leadership at a high level gives one power over even original sin. Thus, when we pray, we may use the lesson in this text to pray for our own accession to a level where God may use us as leaders in His battle against sin. One hundred. When Pharaoh shall speak to you, it shall turn into a snake. Shemot seventy nine. Rabbi Yehuda opened the
he was occupied with elucidating the law 102 come and see by day he was occupied with the Torah to carry out justice and at night he was occupied with songs and praises until day came what was the reason it was because he was occupied all day to complete and clarify the laws which are the aspect of the left in order to include the left in the right because day is the aspect of the right which is cheated by night he was occupied with praises which are sensitive in order to include the grade of the night which is judgment with day which is cheated 103 and come and see in the days of king david he brought clothes all the beasts in the field who inhabited the three worlds bria yitzra and asia to the sea which is malchut when solomon arrived and the mukba was in her fullness in his days the sea which is the mukba flowed and became full meaning that it ascended to super and ima and watered them for there is its absolute fulfillment then all the inhabitants of bria Yetzirah and Asiyah ascended to Atzala and received their sustenance from the sea he asks which was watered first he answers it was already explained that they are the supernal great crocodiles about which it is written and fill the waters in the seas bear sheet 122 they are monotron and sandal phone of Bria who are superior to all the inhabitants of Bria Yetzirah and Asiyah section 13 the serpent couches in the midst of the streams 104 Rabbi Yehuda brings here the words of Rabbi Lazar to differentiate between the great crocodiles have tannin of holiness and the great crocodile of the clipper for the previously mentioned passage opened with the phrase when Pharaoh shall speak to you then you shall say to her and take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh and it shall turn into a snake Shemot 79 afterwards it is written and the magicians of Egypt they also did in like manner with their secret arts for they cast down every man his rod and they turn to Snakes have tannin of it 11 to 12 and the difference between the serpent of holiness of Aaron's rod and the serpent of the sorcerers is explained in the words of Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar said on the supernal right side namely from the right column of Bina emerge 13 supernal springs and deep rivers this is the secret of the supernal throne which is Bina and there are four legs of the throne which are Chesed Bure Tiferet and Malchut of Zeir and each containing Chesed Bure Tiferet so they are 12 and Bina itself which is over them which is the secret of the throne is 13 they are divided into two columns right and left because Tiferet is also divided into right and left which are Chesed and Bure those on the right side are called springs and those on the left rivers the ones ascend namely those that belong to the left which illuminate from below upwards and the others descend namely those that belong to the right illuminating from above downwards they Interpenetrate each other, meaning that they combine one with the other, because one which is the central column withdraws that is it lessens its head of the left column that is called river and brings it in two bodies called stream and river. One body from the aspect of river which is left and shakma receives from the shesedim of the right above and brings forth to the lower beings a thousand streams that emerge to four sides which are chesed, bure, tiferet, and malchut, each containing two hundred and fifty streams. One hundred and five from these thirteen rivers of the left and the springs on the right, as mentioned, emerge thirteen streams which are lights of the left, entering into them four hundred and ninety nine and one half from the right and four hundred and ninety nine and one half from the left take water, one half on the side and one half from the side remain, and the two halves become one. This enters between the streams and turns into a serpent. One hundred and six. The head of the serpent had tannin is red like a rose. The color red denotes judgments that are. Drawn from by its scales are hard as iron for the aspect of Malchut is essentially called iron which is the secret of the attribute of judgment its wings are swimming wings namely fins and they go into all these streams that were mentioned when he raises his tail he smites and kicks the other fish and no one can withstand him 107 the mouth of the serpent is a flaming fire when he swims in all these streams namely when he draws chakma from above downwards like the streams the other fish there meaning the grades tremble and flee from there to the sea which is Malchut of holiness once in 70 years he catches this way namely in 499 and one half streams on the right and completes the half that is missing on the right and once in 70 years he catches that way namely in 499 and one half streams on the left and completes the half that is missing on the left since the serpent is constructed from these two halves that are missing in them thus the thousand streams less one were filled by him that is become completed by him the serpent couches in the midst of the streams but does not swim in them for crouching does no action and does not draw shakma from above downwards unlike swimming which acts and draws from above downwards and therefore its aspect of judgment is revealed as is mentioned and written before us 108 but when he swims in them a flame of fire emerges among the clipot and then the streams all rise and storm meaning that they raise their waves above and bring them down which is called storm in rhetorical language these streams mix one with the other and receive the blue color that tends to black which is the color of malchute and wheels move above to the four directions of the world namely the wheels of the chariot of holiness draw the top three spirot by their travels and the serpent straightens up his tail and smites upward the wheels thus damaging them and smites below the rivers they all flee in 109 until a certain flame of Fire arises in the north side and a proclamation resounds standing groups and disperse to four sides for he who will put a snare upon the face of the serpent has awoken as written and I will put hooks in your jaws yesh is called 294 this refers to the serpent that couches in the midst of its streams on the streams then all the groups scatter take the serpent and puncture his face by the side of his jaws and bring him into a hole in the great abyss which is by of the clipot until his power is broken then he is returned to his rivers 110 this is done to him once in 70 years because when he reaches the end of 70 years which is his malchute of malchute the power of judgment in his tail is again stimulated so that he would not ruin the places of the firmaments and their pillars for this they all praise and law come let us prostrate and bow down let us kneel before Hashem our maker Tehillim 956 111 but the supernal serpents that stand above in holiness who are Libyan and his cows are the ones who were blessed as written and Elohim blessed them. Bereshit 122 these rule over all the other fish which are the very level grades in the streams as is written and fill the waters in the seas and of this it is written Hashem how manifold are your works in wisdom have you made them all. Tehillim 10424 section 14 the bright blade of a revolving sword dissipated in 112 my beloved is to me a cluster of Hanasher. Hasherim 114 a cluster refers to supernal Iamay namely Bina as a cluster is decorated with so many leaves and so many branches to the children of Israel who eat it so the supernal Sheshana which is Bina is decorated she elevates main look and female waters to Chakma with many jewels of eight vessels namely the four letters of Yudhi Hei Bapay and the four letters of Adonai which are male and female many offerings that Israel offer and many kinds of ornaments of atonement for her children she Stands in them before the king which is Chakma and immediately and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant Bereshit 916 meaning that he unites with her and Bina gives us from her petitions she asked from Chakma for our sakes through those blessings that the sages composed to request before the king in the prayer service 113 at the time of the aforementioned union of Chakma and Bina all the judgments of the Lord Shechina which is Malchut which is Hay. Vav Hay Yad Adonai convert into mercy such as Yad Hay Vav Hay to fulfill the verse though your sins be like scarlet they shall be as white as snow Yeshua 118 namely Yad Hay Vav Hay though they be like red crimson which is Hay Vav Hay Yad they shall be as white as wool which I as Yad Hay Vav Hay all the judgments of this namely of Malchut become whitened by the supernal Shechina which is Bina 114 and the Shechina which is Hay Vav Hay Yad is the bright blade of a revolving sword too. Guard the way to the tree of life. Bear sheet 324. The sages explain that the reason it is called the blade of a revolving sword is because it revolves sometimes to mercy and sometimes to judgment, sometimes to men and sometimes to women, sometimes to judgment as in Havah Hayyad, sometimes to mercy as in Yad Havah Hayyad is from the side of the tree of life, meaning that if the Sheshana joins with the tree of life, which is Zeir and that ascended to bind all the judgments that it contains, turn to mercy and from the side of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, meaning the Sheshana that is not attached to the tree of life, all the mercy contained in it turns to judgment to judge all those who transgress the words of Torah 115. And this tree of life is in the world to come, which is bind in which all the names of judgment turn into mercy. And the sages therefore explain that the world to come, which is bind, is not like this world, which is malchute for good tidings in this. World we say
revolves from good to real evil and if you ask about the sorcerers of Pharaoh of whom it is written and the magicians did so with their secret arts lit blades Shema 83 who turned their rods into serpents through their blades how they could do this he answers because of these rotations in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they could do it end of this section 15 take your rod 117 and you shall say to Aaron take your rod Shema 79 he asks what is the reason the rod of Aaron and not the rod of Moshe was selected for this he answers the rod of Moshe was especially holy because the holy name was carved into it in the supernal garden of Eden and the holy one blessed be he did not want to defile it with the rods of the sorcerers because it had to swallow them as written and the rod of Aaron swallowed their rods moreover in order to subdue all that comes from the left side the rod of Aaron is necessary because Aaron the priest came from the right and the left is subjected to the right 118 rabbi she asked rabbi you see it was revealed before the holy one blessed be he that these sorcerers will make serpents and if so what is the significance of making serpents before pharaoh he said to him it is because the origin of the punishments is in there meaning the primordial serpent that caused adam and eve to fail the reign of pharaoh starts at the origin of the serpent namely from the left side and when they saw the transition of aaron's rod to a serpent all the sorcerers rejoiced because the beginning of the wisdom of their serpent was such immediately aaron's rod turned back into a dry piece of wood and swallowed them 119 because of this they were amazed and knew that there was a higher dominion on earth for they thought that below on earth there is no dominion aside from them to do anything then and the rod of aaron swallowed their rods it is precisely the rod of aaron as the serpent reverted into wood and swallowed them 120 therefore Aaron made two signs one above and one below the one above namely that the supernal serpent of holiness overpowered their serpents and the one below namely that the wood dominated their serpents by swallowing them and Pharaoh was wiser than all his sorcerers and he perceived that the supernal dominion ruled over the earth ruling above and below 121 Rabbi Yossi said lest you say that everything the sorcerers do they do only with optical illusions that it only appears so but not more the Torah tells us and they turned precisely as written and they turned snakes Shemot 712 as they actually made the serpents and Rabbi Yossi said even when their serpents returned to be with the wood of Aaron swallowed them because it is said and the rod of Aaron swallowed their rods 122 it is written behold I am against you Pharaoh king of Egypt the great crocodile that catches in the midst of his streams Yashis 293 he is called so because from it Great serpent starts their dominion below but their wisdom is drawn from under all the levels of the serpent and his streams 123 come and see their wisdom abides in the lowest levels in order to subdue and subjugate these levels to the upper levels which are the great serpent and his streams to be included in them and then they can draw light to the lower levels the tops of their dominion and their sources are under the serpent they hold to the serpent because their highest level which is the king receives power from there therefore their king is likened to a great serpent who catches in the midst of his streams this is understood from the verse that is behind the mill Shemot 115 meaning behind the highest levels that are called mill since they are not capable of receiving the light of Chakma which is called firstborn except by subduing and subjugating it to the higher levels as mentioned therefore they are called the firstborn of the maid servant 124 Rabbi Shibas. Sitting one day at the gate of Ashah, he saw Rabbi Lazar and a bird that is named Kafra flying by him. He said to Rabbi Lazar, It seems that even when you are going on the road, everyone desires to follow you. Rabbi Lazar turned his head and saw it. He said, Certainly the bird has a mission since the Holy One blessed be he accomplishes his missions through everyone and the Holy One blessed be he has many messengers. Do not say that he does his mission only with living things but also with inanimate. Things 125 he opened the discussion saying, For the stone will cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Chabakah 211 How careful a person must be not to sin before the Holy One blessed be he and if you ask who will bear testimony against him, lo and behold the stones of his house and the beams of his house will bear testimony against him and sometimes the Holy One blessed be he carries out his missions through them. Come and see the rod of Aaron which was a dry. Piece of wood the Holy One blessed be he performed with it the first of the miracles two missions were accomplished with it one is though it was a dry piece of wood yet it swallowed their serpents the second is that it temporarily received the spirit of life and became a creature 126 Rabbi Lazar said may the spirit expire of those who say that the Holy One blessed be he will not resurrect the dead because it is not possible that he could make a new creature of them let these wicked foolish people who are far from Torah and far from the Holy One blessed be he see that Aaron had in his hands a rod dry wood which the Holy One blessed be he turned it temporarily into a creature that is a changed in spirit and body the Holy One blessed be he concealed in the dust those bodies that already had holy spirits and souls observed the precepts of the Torah and were occupied with Torah days and nights at the time when the world will rejoice meaning after the end of correction how much more so will the Holy One blessed be he make them new creatures 127 Rabbi Shia said not only this but that body that previously existed will rise this is understood from the words your dead will again live Yeshayah 2619 it is not written will he create so it means that they were already created before but they only need to come alive again one bone will remain from the body under the earth and that bone never rots or disappears in the dust at that time the Holy One blessed be he will soften it and make it like leaven in the dough and it will rise and spread to four corners and the body and all its limbs will be completed from it afterwards the Holy One blessed be he will put the spirit into it Rabbi Lazar said to him it is so come and see this bone is softened with dew as written for the dew of lights is your dew of it section 16 that they may become blood 128 and Hashem said to Moshe say to Aaron take your rod and stretch your hand on the waters of Egypt on their streams on their canals and on their ponds and on all their pools of water that they may become blood Shemot 719 Rabbi Yehuda said we must concentrate on this passage how could he have gone to all these places namely to all the waters of Egypt and all their ponds throughout the land of Egypt it is also written and seven days were completed after Hashem had smitten the river of 25 it is written the river yet you say on the waters of Egypt on their streams on their canals and on their ponds 129 he answers the waters of Egypt is the Nile all the other ponds and streams and well springs and all their waters were filled from there therefore Aaron raised his hand only to smite the Nile come and see that it is so for it is written and Egypt could not drink of the water of the river of 21 so we see that the river includes all the waters of Egypt 130 Rabbi Abba said come and see the lower waters spread in many directions namely right and to left and the upper waters gather in the gathering place of the water which is Yezid of Zeir and Ben is written and Elohim said let the waters under the heaven be gathered together to one place and the gathering together of the waters he called seas bear sheet 19 to 11 this passage was explained come and see the firmament that contains the sun and moon and stars and constellations which is Yezid of Zeir and Ben that includes within it all the lights of Zeir and Ben is the gathering place of it water for it receives all the water namely all the lights and waters the earth which is the lower world namely Malchut as soon as the earth receives the waters it spreads them and divides them to every side and from there everything is watered 131 during the time when judgment dwells the lower world which is Malchut does not nurture from that firmament but nurtures from the left side that is not included in the right and Malchut is called the sword of Hashem is filled with blood Yeshayah 346 Woe to those who then nurture from her and are sustained by her because at that time the sea which is Malchut was nurturing from two sides from Yezid of Zeir and Ben and from the left side therefore it is divided into two parts white from the side of Yezid and red from the left side then it casts into the river the portion of Egypt namely the red smites their source above and smites below therefore Israel drink water because they are attached to Yezid of Zeir and Ben which is the white part of Malchut and the Egyptians drink blood which is the red part of Malchut 132 so if you say that the plague of blood was only to repel them come and see they drank the blood which entered their intestines broke through and rose so Israel sold them water for money then they drank water therefore the first plague that smote them was blood 133 Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion with this passage I will extol you my Elohim and I will bless your name forever and ever. Tehillim 1451 Come and see that David spoke of his level I will extol you for he wrote my Elohim meaning my own Elohim namely Malchut which is his level for he wanted to
See when the Holy One blessed be he wishes to do vengeance upon the idol worshipping nations the left side is stimulated and the moon becomes full for it is melted with blood from that side and the springs and rivers of below and all that are on the left side flow with blood therefore their punishment is blood 136 come and see when this blood is aroused against any nation it is the blood of killed people because another nation is provoked to come and kill them but in Egypt the Holy One. Blessed be he did not want to bring another nation to arouse blood against them namely to kill them because of Israel that were living among them so that Israel who dwelt in their country would not be distressed the Holy One blessed be he smote them with blood in their springs instead so they were not able to drink 137 since their dominion rules over that river the Holy One blessed be he punished their dominion first in order that their deity would be smitten first because the Nile was one of their deities similarly their other deities were gushing with blood this is the meaning of and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone Shemot 719 138 Rabbi Shia rose one night to study Torah the young Rabbi Yossi who was still a child was with him Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying go your way eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart for the Elohim has already accepted your works. Kahilat 97 he asks what did Solomon see that caused him to say this passage 139 and he answers all the words of Solomon were said with wisdom go your way eat your bread with joy means that the Holy One blessed be he brings a person who goes in the ways of the Holy One blessed be he close to him and gives him tranquility and repose then he eats and drinks the bread and wine with a joyful heart because the Holy One blessed be he has accepted his actions 140 that boy said to him if so. Then you have said that all the words of Solomon were with wisdom so where is the wisdom here in this passage Rabbi Shia said to him my son cook your food meaning concentrate well and you will understand this passage the boy said to him before I have cooked I already know Rabbi Shia said to him how do you know 141 the boy said to him I heard one voice meaning one thing my father used to say about this passage Solomon cautioned people to crown the congregation of Israel which is Malchut with joy which is the right side namely the light of Shesedim which is bread so it would be crowned with joy bread alludes to the light of Shesedim then it should be crowned with wine which is the left side namely the illumination of Chakma which is the left of Bina so that the faith of all namely Malchut will be in complete joy in the right and left when it will be between both all the blessings will dwell in the world this is the utmost perfection of Malchut that the illumination of it Left which is Chakma would be enveloped in the light of Chesedim that is on the right for then both illuminate in her for this is the secret of bread and wine all this occurs when the Holy One blessed be he accepts the deeds of people as written for the Elohim has already accepted your works. Kahila 97 Rabbi Shia approached and kissed him he said I swear my son that I left this for you meaning that even though I also knew it I did not say it and I left it for you to say and now I know. That the Holy One blessed be he wishes to crown you with Torah 142 Rabbi Shia again opened the discussion saying say to Aaron take your rod and stretch your hand on the waters of Egypt. Shemot 719 he asks why Aaron and not Moshe and answers for the Holy One blessed be he said water remains in the place where Aaron is because water is in the right and the left wants to draw water from there Aaron who comes from that side will stimulate a flow of water and when the left which is Egypt. Receives it, it will be transformed into blood. 143. Come and see the lowest of all levels, which is Malchut, which is called the sword of Hashem, is filled with blood. Smote first, and their waters turned into blood. Rabbi Shimon said, The Holy One, blessed be he, started to smite from the lowest, which is Malchut, his hand that contains ten fingers, which is the secret of the tense Firot. Smote with each finger from Malchut until Keter, and when he reached their highest level, which is the firstborn of all the levels, namely corresponding to Keter, he acted and passed over the land of Egypt and killed them all. Therefore, he killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, because this is their highest level, and the firstborn to everything. Section 17. And the river shall bring forth frogs in swarms. 144. Come and see Pharaoh ruled with the power of water, as written, the great crocodile that catches in the midst of his streams. Yashis 293. Therefore, first his river was. Turned into blood afterward frogs came out of IT that played Egypt with sounds that shook within their bowels they came out of the river and onto the ground with high-pitched voices in all directions until the Egyptians fell as if dead in their homes 145 and the secret of the matter is that all the ten signs the Holy One blessed be he performed originated from the strong hand which is pure and this hand overpowered all the levels of their dominion in order to confuse them they did not know what to do to be saved when the greats tried to do something it became apparent to all that they could do nothing to be saved from the plagues because of the strong hand that rested upon them 146 and the river shall bring forth frogs in swarms and these will go up and come into your house Shemot 728 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying a voice was heard in Rama lamentation and bitter weeping Rachel weeping for her children Yermeah 3114 come and see this passage has been Explained in many places but this passage is difficult for it says Rachel weeping for her children yet only Joseph and Benjamin were the children of Rachel and no more while Leah had her six tribes so why did Rachel weep and not Leah 147 he answers but it has been said it is written and Leah's eyes were weak there she 2917 why were they weak because every day she would go out to the crossroads and ask about Esau they would tell her about the actions of that wicked man and she feared she would fall into his lot so she wept daily until her eyes became weak 148 the Holy One blessed be he said you are weeping to merit that righteous man Jacob and not be the lot of that wicked man upon your life your sister will rise at the crossroads and weep over the exile of Israel but you will be inside namely in the cave of Machpelah and will not weep over the Rachel will weep over the exile of Israel 149 however this passage really refers to what we said meaning that according to the literal meaning it is interpreted this way but the secret meaning of the matter is that Rachel and Leah are two worlds the Nukva from the chest up of Zeir Enfin is called Leah and the Nukva that is from the chest down of Zeir Enfin is called Rachel one is the world of concealment namely Leah and one is the world of revelation namely Rachel therefore the one Leah was buried and concealed within the cave and was covered while the other Rachel remains at the crossroads for she was buried on the way to Ephrat in the open and everything is in the likeness of above therefore Jacob did not bring Rachel into the cave or to any other place as it is written yet there was but a little way to come to Ephrat Bereshit 487 he did not bring her to the city because he knew that her place was in an open spot 150 come and see the congregation of Israel which is Malchut is called Rachel as written and as a sheep had Rachel before her shearers is dumb Yishayah 537 why is she dumb it is because her voice which is Zeir and is stopped when other nations rule and she becomes dumb 151 this is the meaning of a voice was heard in Rama lamentation and bitter weeping a voice was heard in Rama refers to celestial Jerusalem namely by Rachel weeping for her children as long as the children of Israel are in exile she weeps for them because she is their mother she refused to be comforted for her children what is the reason because he is not he asks it should have said because they are not and answers it is because her husband who is Zeir and called voice is gone from her and is not joined to her 152 come and see she did not just weep over Israel just once but rather every moment they were in exile for the reason they blemished the voice which was gone from Rachel the Holy One blessed be he brought about a voice to the Egyptians to punish them as written and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt such as there was none like at Shemot 116 he also arranged for them other voices in these frogs that raised their voices in their intestines so they fell dead in the marketplaces 153 and the frog came up Shemot 82 it should have said frogs in the plural he answers it was one frog but it bred and the land became filled with them and they all gave themselves over to the fire as written and into your ovens and into your kneading troughs Shemot 728 what did they say we went through fire and through water but you did bring us out into abundance Tehillim 6612 and if you ask how does this concern the Egyptians that all these frogs went into the fire he answers they all came into the fire and went into the ovens yet did not die those that did die what did they do there was bread in the oven and they came into the bread and burst and others came out of them and were swallowed in the bread and when they wanted to eat of the bread the bread in their bowels turned back into frogs that danced and raised their voices until the Egyptians died this plague was harder on
who was smitten with his rod 155 the first pharaoh when Sarah was taken to him hinted to his artist and they drew her picture in his room on the wall over his bed he had no peace until they made a picture of Sarah on a panel and when he entered his bed he brought the panel with him every king who succeeded him saw the painted image and gestures came before him so when he got into his bed he enjoyed that picture therefore the king was smitten here more than everyone else this is the meaning of and into your bedchamber and on your bed and afterwards and into the house of your servants and on your people Shemot 728 the expression on your bed appears in relation to not accept him alone 156 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion saying all the rivers run into the sea yet the sea is not full to the place where the rivers flow thither they return Kahilat 17 this passage is explained and the sages have spoke of it yet come and see when these rivers which are the lights of Zeir and run to the sea which is Malchut the sea receives them and absorbs them in itself because the water freezes in the sea and the ice draws to itself all the water that flows to it afterwards the water emerges with the power of the south namely Shesedim on the right side and waters all the wild animals as written they give drink to every wild beast Tehillim 10411 157 come and see the frozen sea draws in all the water and melts by the power of the south as we have learned this is why it is not full this has already been explained 158 here the friends remarked about the passage to the place where the rivers flow thither they return wherefore do they return he answers because the river that flows and comes out of Eden which is Yezid of Zeir and never interrupts its flow from Malchut and always supplies water to the sea therefore the waters return flow and again return never stopping when it again flows to water everything namely to draw shock, but that's of this all the Clip out a northern wind arrives and the water freezes and the southern wind which is warm draws it so it can flow in every direction therefore that sea abides between the two sides north and south and through them the sea perse of your ships which are the grades that receive from Malchut travel in it in every direction namely after all the directions south north east and west are included within each other 159 come and see when the king who is Zeir and comes to his bed which is Malchut at midnight the northern wind awakens which is the left side which arouses love towards the queen namely to Malchut without the stimulation of the north the king would not join with her because love starts at the north as is said his left hand is under my head Sure Hashirim 26 the south which is the right column embraces with love as written and his right hand embraces me but then many gestures call forth songs until the morning comes as written when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy. Eo 387, 160. When morning comes, all the upper and lower beings recite songs because at night only the angels that are drawn from the left column recite poetry, but in the morning they all recite songs, meaning even those that are drawn from the right, then all the columns are combined one with the other under the dominion of the right. And similarly, Israel recite poems below as written. You that make mention of Hashem take no rest. Yeshayah 626. This is addressed specifically to the lower beings, namely to Israel 161. At midnight, those who desire to constantly mention the Holy One, blessed be he, do not allow their hearts to be silent and rise from their beds to make mention of the Holy One, blessed be he. With the light of morning, they hasten to the synagogue to praise the Holy One, blessed be he. And again, after midday, meaning at midnight, the afternoon prayer, and also at night when darkness falls, and night is enveloped in darkness and the sun. As rest about these is written you that make mention of Hashem take no rest this refers to Israel the holy nation 162 the holy one blessed be he remembered them for that in Egypt and those that take no rest day or night rose against Pharaoh and who are they they are the frogs whose voices are never still it is because he strengthened the holy people that are not silent day or night from praising the holy one blessed be he and there was no one in Egypt who could speak with another the land became devastated because of them and babies and children died because of their sound 163 and if you ask why were they not able to kill the frogs he answers for when one raised a stick or a stone to kill one it would burst and six frogs emerged from its bowels which went and kicked about the land so eventually they refrained from approaching them 164 come and see how many rivers and how many streams emerged from the supernal sea which is Malchut at the time the water was thawed and flowed many rivers divide in many directions into many streams and many brooks they belong to the minister appointed over the aspect of Egypt these are swarming waters for there are no waters that come from the sea that do not bring forth fishes after their kind 165 he asks if the rivers and streams are high levels that are drawn from Malchut then who are the fishes he answers they are messengers in the world who are appointed to do the bidding of their master and they are appointed with the spirit of wisdom therefore we have learned there is water that raises wise people and there is water that raises fools according to these rivers that split to all the aspects 166 the rivers of Egypt raise sorcerers which are strong fish bound in the ten levels of sorcery as written that uses divination soothsayer or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a medium or a wizard or a necromancer to 1811 to 12 that uses is one and divinations is second so we have three n with the other seven there are ten these are ten kinds in the art of sorcery 167 at the time of the exodus from Egypt the Holy One blessed be he extended his finger and mixed these streams and rivers of Egypt which are the high levels from which Egypt are nurtured their fish of wisdom were prevented from issuing to them wisdom one reason was that it changed into blood and another is that the fish namely the frogs raised their voices to draw the spirit of wisdom in vain the spirit of their arts did not rest on them 168 the swarm of gnats lit mixture is also like that in that he mixed the various kinds of levels of their wisdom so they could not attain them even those levels of their wisdom that were already available in the land were bringing destruction upon the land namely they became demons and turned their ways evil what is mixture he answers it is a medley as written a garment mingled of linen and wool they acron 19, 19, and you shall not sow your field with mingled seed Ibid which means to sow many species by throwing by hand similarly mixture that is mentioned here means a medley 169 come and see how many powers were aroused above as one the holy one blessed be he mixed them together in order to confuse their strong powers above all these mighty deeds that the holy one blessed be he performed in Egypt were with one hand which is the strong hand as mentioned for he raised his hand upon them above and below hence the wisdom of Egypt was lost as written. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Yeshayah 2914 170 come and see it is written and I will set Egypt against Egypt Yeshayah 192 meaning that he will incite Egypt of above which are their ministers against Egypt on earth these hosts of above appointed over the hosts of below were mixed their arrays were confused above and the Egyptians were not able to attain through their sorcery these places of their ministers above. That they were able to attain before because they were confused therefore he brought upon them the plague of mixture that is a mixture of animals 171 what is the meaning of the lice that the dust of the land raised come and see every creature that is produced on earth is drawn from the power of a minister above that was sown on it and everything is based on supernal pattern 172 come and see that the holy one blessed be he made seven firmaments and similarly seven lands they are the boundaries that are explained in their place namely that they correspond to the seven sphira chesed bura typhoret net sash and malchut there are seven firmaments above and seven peripheries of the earth above similarly the grade spread below seven firmaments and seven peripheries of the earth and the friends explained that the seven lands are like boxes one over the other 173 these seven peripheries of the earth above which correspond to chesed bura typhoret net sash and Malchut each expands into ten because each one of Chesed Bura Tiferet Net Sash and Malchut is composed of ten Sphirot therefore they divide to seventy princes who were appointed over the seventy nations and those lands which are the boundaries of every nation which are seventy lands around the holy land of Israel as written behold it is his litter that of Solomon sixty valiant men are round about it of the mighty men of Israel Sher Hashirim thirty seven there are ten concealed in them with which they are seventy and they are the seventy that's around the holy land this is above and is also so below one hundred and seventy four come and see that land the boundary of the portion of Egypt the holy one blessed be he stretched out his finger at that time and flames of fire were produced in that periphery all these boundaries that were moist with water were dried out as was every drop of spring water then below in the land of Egypt the lice appeared from the dust of the earth one hundred and seventy five he asks it says that Aaron was smiting the dust of the earth with lice and you say that the Holy
People who are not of the king's palace should walk among them, they must separate from them. Whence do we know this from Caleb? For it is written, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and followed me fully, Demit bar 1424. What is another spirit? It is that he separated from the spies, as is written, and they ascended to the Negev, and he came to Chevron. Demit bar 1322. It should have said, And they came in plural, but he separated from the spies, and he alone came to Chevron to prostrate himself on the graves of the patriarchs. Therefore it is said about him, and he came to Chevron in the singular 177. Chevron was given to him as a portion and inheritance to strengthen himself with, as is written, And to him shall I give the land that he walked in it. Debarim 136. He asks, Why was Chevron given to him if it is because he prostrated himself there on the graves of the patriarchs to be delivered from the plans of the spies, and he was delivered? It is not so. 178. Answers I heard the secret meaning of this matter I as similar to the words David inquired of Hashem saying shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah and Hashem said to him go up and David said where shall I go up and he said to Chevron to Shmuel 21 here we have to reflect since Saul was already dead and David was anointed to receive the kingship even during the days of Saul if so why was David not made king if Saul had died and why did not he receive the reign over all the children of Israel but came to Chevron and received the reign over Judah alone for seven years and he tarried there although seven years only after the death of Ishbosheth did he receive the reign over Israel in Jerusalem 179 he answers but it is all a secret before the Holy One blessed be he come and see the Holy Malchut of above did not receive the light of Malchut completely until she joined with the patriarchs who are Shesed, Bira, and Tiferet that are from the chest up of Zeir and Penwen. She joined with them, she was built a complete edifice from the higher world which is by and the upper world is called seven years because all the seven Sfirat Shesed, Bura, Tifer, and Netzach, Hadyazid, and Malchut are included in it. 180 This is understood from and he built it seven years. I may 638 This is the upper world and therefore it is not written in seven years because it refers to the upper world which is called seven years as is written for six days. Hashem made it. Heavens and the earth. Shema 3117 Who are the six days? Namely Abraham is written. These are the generations of the heaven and of the earth. Behagaram when they were created. Bereshit 24 which is spelled with the same letters as B. Abraham with Abraham. Abraham is called six days for he is Jesus of Zeir and which includes Jesus, Bura, Tifer, Netzach, Hadyazid, and the world was built with him because he is six days. Similarly, he built it seven years which encompasses the upper world which is by called seven years 181 come and see David wished to be built in the complete lower Malchut kingdom in the likeness of the upper Malchut yet he was not built until he came to join with the patriarchs in Chevron he stayed there seven years to be built among them after seven years he was built in everything necessary and his reign was formed so that it would never be removed from him were he not made ready in Chevron to join his place with the patriarchs his reign would not have been constructed enabling IT to persevere properly similarly Caleb within whom the spirit of Chakma shown came to Chevron to join with the patriarchs and to his own place did he go because the aspect of the spirit of Chakma is acquired only through linking with the patriarchs as all this is said afterwards it became his place since it was given to him as mentioned and he inherited it section 19 ways paths pleasantness and peace 182 Rabbi Yisa and Rabbi Shizkiah. Were traveling from Cappadocia to Ladeju, who had a load of birds called Kafra, was with them on a donkey. While they were traveling, Rabbi Yisa said to Rabbi Shishkia, "Open your mouth and say something of those good words of Torah that you speak every day before the holy luminary." Rabbi Shimon, 183, he opened the discussion, saying, "Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace." Mishlei 317, her ways are ways of pleasantness, refers to the ways of Torah, because whoever goes in the way of the Torah, the Holy One, blessed be He, causes the pleasantness of the Shechinah to dwell upon him to never be removed from him, and all her paths are peace, are the paths of the Torah, because all the paths of the Torah are peace. He has peace above, peace below. He has peace in this world, peace in the world to come. 184, the Israel said, "There is a coin in the box, meaning there is an inner meaning to this passage." He said to him, "How do you know this?" He said to him, "I heard it from my." Father and I learned here in this passage a good thing 185 he opened the discussion saying this passage has two matters and two aspects you read in it of ways and read of paths you read in it of pleasantness and read of peace what is ways and what is paths what is pleasantness and what is peace 186 he answers her ways are ways of pleasantness resembles the words who places a way in the sea Yeshayah 4316 for any way in the Torah is a road open to all like a way that is open to everyone similarly her ways are the ways that are opened by means of the patriarchs who are Shesed, Bura and Tiferet who carved in the great sea which is Malchut and entered it these are the roads that open to all sides and all directions in the world 187 and this pleasantness the verse speaks of is the pleasantness that emanates from the world to come which is fine and illuminates on all the lights which are male and female and they spread in all direction namely to right and left it. Patriarchs who are Shesed, Bura, and Tiferet of Zeir and Benurish on the goodness and the light of the world to come that is called pleasantness. Another explanation is that the world to come is called pleasantness because when the world to come is roused to bestow all goodness, all joy, all the lights, and all the freedom of the world are awakened, therefore the world to come which is Bana is called pleasantness. 188 Therefore we have learned the wicked who are in Gehenom all have joy and rest on Shabbat. Once Shabbat enters as the end of Shabbat, we have to arouse the supernal joy over us in order to be delivered from the punishment of the wicked who from that moment onwards are punished. We have to awaken saying and let the pleasantness of Hashem our Elohim be upon us. Tehillim 9017 for this draws again the supernal pleasantness which is the Mokin of Bana, which is general joy. Therefore her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. 189 he asks what is her? Paths he answers these are the paths and courses that emerge from above from Abba and I am a single covenant called peace receives them which is Yezid of Zeir and household peace and brings them to the great sea which is Malchut when in full strength and thus it grants it peace hence it says and all her paths are peace and this explains the meaning of paths and peace Rabbi Yisa and Rabbi Shishkiah came and kissed him they said all these lofty words were hidden by you yet we were not aware of it they went when they reached the field and saw that the animals of the field were dead they said most certainly there is an animal pestilence in this place section 20 behold the hand of Hashem is 190 the Jews said you said that the Holy One blessed be he had killed in Egypt all those cattle and all those sheep there were three types of deaths among the animals one pestilence two those killed by hail and three the firstborn of the animals that died during the plague of it. Firstborn 191 he asks what was their type of death he answers it is first written behold the hand of Hashem is on your cattle which is in the field Shemot 93 why is it that it is not written the hand of Hashem of all the plagues here a hand with five fingers is concerned because at first by the plague of lice it is written this is the finger of Elohim Shemot 815 here all five fingers participate each finger killing one species and there were five species as written on the horses on the asses on the camels on the oxen and on the sheep Shemot 93 we see five kinds for the five fingers which are considered a hand therefore behold the hand of Hashem there shall be a very grievous plague they died of themselves for they were found dead 192 since Egypt did not return in repentance the very letters of pestilence had never dollar bedrest returned and killed all those that survived and the letters dollar bedrest turned into hail had buried bedrest dollar what is it Difference between them pestilence is affected quietly while hail with the strength of anger both of these were in one place namely in five fingers 193 come and see pestilence dollar bedresh these are letters that are quiet a quiet death for they died of themselves there was hail bedresh dollar since the letters changed to be with the strength of anger and killed everything they remained sitting in that field they saw sheep coming to a certain place and die there that you rose and went to that place and saw two dead birds called Kafari full of worms and poison that caused the sheep to die section 21 and I will make of you a great nation 194 he opened the discussion saying and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing bear sheet 122 this matter is of Rabbi Lazar
out with them should have been and they went out with him since it says and Terak took Abram his son Abidwa then does it say they went out with them he answers rather Terak and Lot went out with Abraham and Sarah for after Abraham was saved from the fire Terak again reverted to doing his bidding therefore it is written they went out with them because Terak and Lot went out with Abraham and Sarah and since they were awakened below first to go to the land of Canaan immediately. There was an awakening towards him above and the Holy One blessed be he said to him get you out Beersheed 121 197 Rabbi Shimon said get you out or for yourself namely to better yourself from your land from that aspect of habitation that you weigh where you were born namely from the right side before it was included in the left and the Holy One blessed be he told him to go from there and from your kindred from your own generations namely from the left side before it was included in. The right for the left is the product of the right and from your father's house that you regard their source and the Holy One blessed be he said to him that he must no longer heed them to the land that I will show you for there that which you desire will be revealed to you namely the power that is appointed over it which is deep and hidden immediately so Abram departed as Hashem has spoken to him and before we wish to go from here in order to acquire the secret of wisdom the end is missing. Section 22 But Sarai was barren 198 Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shia were traveling on the road Rabbi Yossi said to Rabbi Shia why are you silent the road is not improved save with words of Torah Rabbi Shia sighed and wept he opened the discussion saying but Sarai was barren she had no child Beersheed 1130 woe unto this woe unto the time that Hagar bore Ishmael 199 Rabbi Yossi said to him why Sarah gave birth after Ishmael was born and had a son of a holy stock why do you say? Woe he said to him you see and I see and so I heard the matter from the mouth of Rabbi Shimon and I wept for he said woe for that time because since Sarah was tardy it is written and Sarai said to Abram I pray you go into my maid Beersheed 162 therefore the moment was propitious for Hagar to inherit Sarah her mistress and Hagar bore a son from Abraham 200 and Abraham said oh that Ishmael might live before you Beersheed 1718 even though the Holy One blessed be he gave him the news about. Isaac Abraham cleaved to Ishmael until the Holy One blessed be he answered him and as for Ishmael I have heard you of it twenty he was later circumcised and entered the Holy Covenant before Isaac came into the world two hundred and one come and see for four hundred years the minister of the children of Ishmael stood and begged before the Holy One blessed be he said to him whoever is circumcised has a portion in your name the Holy One blessed be he said to him it is so he said to him behold Ishmael who is circumcised why does he not have a portion in you like Isaac he said to him it is not so the one was circumcised well and properly while the other was not so moreover the ones cleave to me properly at the eighth day while the others are distanced from me for many days the appointed minister said to him but still in all since he is circumcised would not he have a good reward for this two hundred and two woe is to the time that Ishmael was born into the world and was circumcised what did the Holy One Blessed be he do pertaining to the complaint of the minister of Ishmael he distanced the children of Ishmael from supernal cleaving and gave them a portion below in the holy land because of their circumcision 203 the children of Ishmael are destined to rule over the holy land for a long time when it is empty from anything like their circumcision which is empty and imperfect and they will prevent the children of Israel from returning to their place until the reward for the merit of it. Children of Ishmael reaches completion 204 the children of Ishmael will cause great wars in the world and the children of Edom will gather against them and wage war against them one on the sea one on the dry land and one near Jerusalem and they will rule over each other but the holy land will not be given over to the children of Edom 205 at that time a nation from the end of the earth will be roused against evil Rome and wage war against it for three months nations will gather there and will fall into their hands until all the children of Edom will gather against it from all the corners of the world and the Holy One blessed be he will be roused against them this is the meaning of for Hashem has a sacrifice in Batsra Yeshea 346 and afterwards it is written that it might take hold of the ends of the earth Eo 3813 he will destroy the descendants of Ishmael from the land and break all the powers of above there will not remain any power above over the eternal people meaning Israel except the power of Israel alone this is the meaning of Hashem is your shade upon your right hand Tehillim 1215 206 for the holy name is on the right and the Torah is on the right therefore everything stems from the right we learned that we should raise the right over the left as it is written that his right hand was a fiery law unto them Devarim 332 in the future to come it is written save with your right hand and answer me Tehillim 607 and of that time it is written for then I will convert the peoples to a pure language that they may all call upon the name of Hashem to serve him with one consent. Sephaniah 39 and on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one. Zechariah 149 blessed is Hashem forever. Amen and Amen.